Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate it. And uh, I appreciate it, uh, your comments earlier, as well as Senator McCain's, about some of the challenges we face with sequestration. And, gentlemen, I, I know there's been a lot of discussion about it today, but uh, bottom line is uh, if you could tell me whether you think already, uh, in terms of your supply chain and uh, your various contractors, that if you see adjustments being made already in light of the fact that um, on January 1st, 2013, the sequestration uh, under current law would take place. Uh, certainly, Senator, sequestration is of concern to us, uh, and it is even more of more concern, I think, to the contracting community, uh, which wants to better understand what the impacts would be as we are uh, potentially compelled to just step in and, and cut funding in uh, major accounts, including programs for which they have, uh, uh, a, a, if you will, a, a, a financial cash flow that they are working uh, to, to pay their employees. So this is the concern of the industry, I think. If they would prefer to get as far in front of these issues as they can, they would like to plan uh, better for this. And so the uncertainty overhanging uh, the department and the defense industrial base is significant here. Yeah. Well, this is what I'm hearing from the private sector and certainly hearing from you all. Um, and we had a similar testimony from uh, the Army Chief of Staff and Secretary of the Army last week. And so I'm, my uh, conclusion, of course, is that we need to move quickly on this, not wait till the end of the year. In fact, do something before the end of the summer uh, if we are going to avoid some of this uh, dislocation. Uh, General, um, you and I have talked about the C-27 before, and I noted in the Chairman's opening remarks, he also addressed it and asked you why you all changed your mind since you came to us uh, and told us how great this program was and how it performed a mission that the C-130 could not. In fact, he also said that the Guard has shown their incredible value to the Air Force, which I agree. And he talked about why this joint program was something that seemed to make so much sense at the time. Um, as you know, I have strong views on this. I think this is the right thing for the taxpayer to continue the program because I think these planes will operate less ex expensively, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, I think it's certainly the right thing for our military. They perform an incredible mission. We had General Ordierno sitting in the seat where you are uh, a week ago telling us about how he'd visited the 179th from Mansfield, Ohio, uh, in theater in Afghanistan, and the great work they're doing with the Army and how the Army really loves to have the ability to have uh, you all through your Air National Guard embedded with them and providing that, that service. Uh, I would like to start with just a general question. What's the cost to operate a C-27, which is the smaller, uh, for those of you who, who aren't, aren't following this closely, uh, air cargo plane, as compared to your alternative if you are to phase out this program that's just getting started, which would be to go to C-130s? What are the costs to operate? The latest numbers we have is about $9,000 per flying hour for the C-27, a little bit higher uh, for the C-130J, and about $10,004 for the C-130H. Okay. Well, those, those are new numbers to me. Um, I don't know what you're including in there, but the numbers you've given us before are 2100 to 2700 for the C27 which is a smaller more efficient aircraft and the C130 was 5100 to 7100 per hour and of course the CH47 which is your other alternative $11,000 per hour so I, I I don't know where those numbers come from let me just uh, uh, give you the opportunity to correct me and maybe say why those numbers are suddenly left up the 2100 uh number is the number that's used for accounting purposes when when the airplane is used in a direct support mode uh, what we call special assignment airlift the, the this is a, a list of costs that do not reflect necessarily the actual flying hour costs so what i what i gave you was what is the current best assessment of actual flying hour costs and and the point being that, yes, the, uh, the C C-27 is somewhat cheaper to operate on a per hour basis than the C-130 because it has two versus four engines. But a key factor here is that the maintenance for the C-130 is organic and the maintenance for the C-27 is contractor logistic support. And there's, there's a considerable difference in relative expense there that goes into the flying hour calculations. 
Well, I, I am finding out new information as, as we talk. This has been incredibly confusing for me uh, because I am trying to get to the facts, as I know you all are. We had a private conversation about this, and none of these uh, data points on 9,000 bucks an hour were, were there then. Um, I assume that you're talking about some of the maintenance costs uh, as opposed to organic costs, additional costs. I, I would say that other information we have indicates that there are a lot of organic costs because uh, the C-130 parts and, and maintenance and so on is often interchangeable. Uh, I think the real issue here is the overall life cycle costs. As you know, the committee report for last year's defense authorization directed that there be a cost analysis for future C-27 buys. My understanding is uh, we weren't going to be seeing that report from you and instead we've gotten one or two PowerPoint slides with the analysis. Um, what I've seen trickle out of the Air Force over the past six weeks is confusing to say the least. Uh, the data has been inadequate, inconsistent. It's left us all with more questions than answers. Uh, I have in front of me here three different Air Force documents with life cycle costs ranging from 111 million bucks per aircraft, then a couple of weeks later to 308 million dollars per aircraft presented to, uh, to my staff, then a few days later 270 million dollars. And I understand your analysis shop recently came out with uh, a comment saying that the 111 million was not part of a quote formalized, authorized, signed document. And then it appears uh, CAPE was directed not to be constrained by some of the assumptions. And we have life cycle costs dropping down to 166 million per aircraft uh, back below the C-130 cost. So frankly, it's been a dizzying six weeks going through uh, uh, these various numbers. And unfortunately, it leaves me with the feeling that you're trying to get this analysis to match a budget, de budget decision that was made by the Air Force. And frankly, not based on some very important information that we're getting, again, from the Army and others about the performance side of it. So um, we'd love to see more than a PowerPoint slide. We'd love to see some consistent analysis. Um, I will tell you also that when you look at the data in terms of the payloads that are being carried, as you know much better than I do, these C-130s uh, often do not have a large payload. When you need a, um, a, a part, say a helicopter part, and you've got to move it, uh, you know, having a smaller airplane makes a whole lot more sense when you only have one pallet or, or two or, or a small number of special operators. Uh, according to the Operation Enduring Freedom data, the committees received from the department regarding the C-27J, 65 percent of the time C-27s have been tasked to move only one pallet of cargo. The remaining 35 percent, they've been tasked to move only two or three pallets of cargo. And I guess I would ask, in your opinion, would it be more efficient to move one, two, or three pallets of cargo with a C-130H or with a C-130J? And uh, if not, why not? Sir, I, uh, with respect to the numbers, uh, we'll be happy to get back with you and discuss in whatever level of depth you would like to how those numbers are derived. As you appreciate, it's all about the assumptions. It's all about the assumptions. Uh, so uh, I, I wouldn't have any more to add to your pile today on, on that subject. But I would ask you to think about the strategic level discussion that we had in the Air Force uh, about how big the tactical air, airlift fleet is going to be going forward and how many fleets we're going to manage. How many fleets are we going to manage? Uh, and, and I think we made the right strategic choice here. We're about to embark. Uh, on, this, on a C-27 capability, which would be, I think, nice to have uh, and does satisfy a, a very narrow piece of the direct support uh, mission that we uh, provide and support to, uh, for the Army. But as you look at fleet management overall, uh, the better strategic choice, in our view, was to go with the C-130 because it is more flexible across the broader range of tactical airlift requirements. And as we go forward, it didn't make sense to us to commit to a C building a very small C-27 fleet that was going to be on contractor logistics support uh, forever uh, and, and, to, uh, and to try to s build and sustain that going forward in the context of a smaller tactical airlift fleet. So this was the strategic level choice that we made here. Uh, Mr. Secretary, my time has expired, but could you give me an answer to the question about moving one, two, or three pallets? Is it more cost-effective to do it with a C-27 or a C-130? Clearly more cost-effective to move one pallet on a C-27 if it's within range. So if 65 percent of the time, based on what you've given us in terms of data, 
that is what the task has been. And the other 35 percent of the time it is to move two or three pallets. It would seem to me that uh, we need to look at this cost accounting in terms of the, the loads being carried. And, Mr. Secretary, I would love to get into more detail. Uh, the power points uh, have gone up, down, all around. And to understand what your assumptions are would be very helpful to me. I appreciate both of your service so much. And uh, I just think we have a fundamental disagreement here on this issue. And I hope that you would be willing to look at, at some uh, data that we can provide that maybe changes some of the assumptions and, therefore, some of the ultimate costs. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Portman.